G'day, Starlo here. Chances are you've already heard of Lakes Crescent and Sorrel in the rugged and beautiful central highlands of Tasmania. Although it could be that you know about them for all the wrong reasons, because back in January 1995, common carp were discovered in both of these famous trout lakes. That was the first time they'd been recorded in the wild in Tasmania. Not surprisingly, the Inland Fisheries Service, or IFS, sprang into action, quickly installing screens to prevent carp escaping downstream and potentially reaching the Derwent. What followed was an intensive 25-year plus program aimed at completely eradicating carp from both of these lakes. This was crucial not only to prevent the spread of the carp to other waterways and hopefully restore two valuable trout fisheries, but also because these lakes are the only known home of the endangered Lake Crescent or Golden Galaxias a unique native fish species that grows to at least 24 centimetres in length. The Inland Fisheries Service's efforts were incredibly effective and in 2004 Crescent was declared carp free and reopened to fishing. 16 years later in 2020 the larger Lake Sorrel was also reopened. It's one of the few instances I know of anywhere on the planet where carp have been completely eradicated from such large waterways. It's a real credit to all the people that were involved. Since its reopening in 2004, Lake Crescent has re-emerged as one of the premier big trophy trout waters in the whole of the Southern Hemisphere. The lake's brown trout in particular grow to spectacular sizes by gorging themselves on the readily available galaxias. Thankfully, the galaxias themselves also seem to be doing pretty well, with regular surveys showing good numbers, especially when the water levels are up or rising. While it's famous for its big trout, Crescent certainly isn't a venue for anglers chasing numbers. It's a situation that reminds me a bit of some of the big Murray cod dams on the Australian mainland, but just as with those cod fisheries, when you finally do score, it's usually well worth the wait. Joe and I have put in a couple of days on previous trips casting both lures and flies at Crescent without scoring. So today, we've bitten the bullet and decided to have a troll. Bearing in mind the importance of those galaxias in the trout's diet, the typically cloudy water and the bright sunshine on this day, I've instinctively pulled this 70 mm RT Broughton shimmy out of the tackle tray and handed it over to Joe. I've really got the vibe for this lure and seeing as we only had one in that colour in the box, I figured I'd better do the right thing and give it to Joe. We've kicked off at about 10 in the morning on a very pleasant day, trolling north along the west shoreline out in about 2 to 2.2 meters of water. We reckon our lures are running about 1.8 meters deep which puts them rather nicely in the strike zone for any trout hunting just above the flat silty lake bed. Joe and I prefer to hold our outfits in our hand when we're trolling not only because it gives you a lot more feel but also because it allows you to work the lure by pumping or sweeping the rod tip or even pushing the outfit back behind you to stall the lure and let it rise in the water column. It's amazing how often you get hit doing this sort of thing. Jo's up in the bow, her eyes glued to the front sounder as she works her lure. She's got the Lorance on side scan, looking for potential targets out to either side of us. Jo's identified a target on my side of the boat. But guess whose lure it is that gets eaten? Yep. Oh, Joe's on. I can't believe it. Oh my god. <laughs> that hit like a train. You should see the size of it. Did it come out of the water? Yeah. Oh, it's left a big hole in the water. Oh, Take Ray Broughton, you'll be pretty chuffed with this if I can get it in, mate. Net's big enough. Trolling for trout is not something as a barra fisher <laughs> that, that I've ever um, thought of, but I'll tell you what, the skills still transfer. Uh, I was on as soon as I as, as soon as I felt that thing hit, it was like I came alive. I've just been sounding and <laughs> trying to mark the um, structure and everything. Oh, oh my god, I've never even seen a just, trout just, just. like this. That could be a double figure fish. 
I keep my rod tip down because I don't oh. want to lose it. Lake Crescent, our first Lake Crescent fish. Okay, Steve. go up now. When you're ready, baby. And that, oh. people, <laughs> you should see his muscle biceps bulging back there. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> oh. My lure's come out. Now, just let me show you this because Ray Broughton's got to be pretty chuffed. There you go, Ray. Beautiful colour. Look at that thing. Holy dooly. Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> Look at the tail on him. Ooh. Bring him up to the camera. Now that is a light crescent. Ooh. Now get a quick measure. Or not. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people spend days and days up here trolling, looking for a fish like that. We've been trolling for probably 15 minutes. We've come about 300 metres and uh, we got lucky. Well done, love. It's interesting that there was a little bit of bait there. I mean, we didn't see the bait until after we got him, but it just goes to show if you see any bait at all, I think it's... Um, not too surprisingly, Joe was fired up and keen to get her lucky lure back in the water and swimming. The best part of another hour passed without notable incident, except for maybe a bump or two on our lures. But we continued to explore that two to three metre depth contour around the northern end of the lake and across to its eastern shore. We were just starting to settle into the groove and enjoy the sunny day when lightning struck again. Yep, on Joe's line. And what a performer this fish was. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Well done. The good thing is that with it's in such a barren bottom, you don't need to worry too much about being caught in any wind. No, you can get nice and light on them and just um, stay in contact with him. This one's doing a bit more than the last. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> not as big, job. I don't think, but he's lively. I don't think he's as big, no. Oh, it's a <laughs> big fish, though, all the same. Oh, he's oh, got he's, he's got wrapped in it now. Oh, oh, look at him go! It's like a saltwater fish. It's running like a bloody tuna under the surface. That's crazy stuff. What a fishery! Oh, beautiful. Oh. Yep, he's um, a really nice looking fish. It's not as big as that first one, but, but he's a gorgeous fish. Look at that yeah. RT Broughton lure laced up on his jaws. Looks great. There we go, oh. well netted. Look at that guy. It's a real buck. Oh, it's strong. Yeah. Oh, he's a fat one. Yep. Now apparently that's a little one by Crescent Standards. Oh, typical. <laughs> Get a quick length on this one, he's a lot shorter than the other one. Yeah. So he's about 65. Hold his tail wrist a little tighter mm. this time. He is 61. I reckon that other one was about 72. Mm -hmm. Just hold him in the water there. Yep. Hang on to him if you can. With two fish like that under our belts, we weren't too stressed about trolling much further, and instead we did a bit of exploring of this stunning body of water. 
The white sandy beaches on the lake's eastern shores are something else. They look like they belong on a tropical island somewhere. We even went ashore on one to stretch our legs, have a walk and take a few photos. Then it was back to the boat ramp and up onto the trailer. Lake Crescent had finally been kind to us on this third attempt. We'll be back for sure. Our next goal is to catch one on a cast and retrieve lure and then ultimately to get one on fly. We know it won't be easy, but then again, nothing worthwhile ever is. Until next time, this is Starlo wishing you tight lines.